In this kitchen remodeling seminar, I'm going to take the original floor plan and enlarge it to meet the client's requirement for a larger kitchen space. I'll begin the process by expanding the as-built floor plan to the larger footprint and placing the dimensions. Then, I'm going to go through the process of changing the roof to a shed style to support a new vaulted ceiling. I'll briefly discuss using an as-built overlay to superimpose over the remodel project. I'll place the cabinets, appliances, and fixtures along the back wall and then create a wall elevation with the dimensions. I'll wrap up the process by looking at 3D visualization options and techniques for this project. You can complete these same steps using our Chief Challenge plan. You can download the plan from our user forum, Chief Talk. I would encourage you to follow these steps to help in your learning and then you can post your results using the hashtag ChiefChallenge on social media. Let's go in and get started. In our as-built project in the 3D view you can see the existing kitchen space is this small rectangular room right in this area. The client would like to make a much larger space. If we look specifically at their requirements for having a larger space, vaulted ceiling, they like to see a large island for entertaining, add an alcove, and a new pantry, fireplace, and open the stairwell to the living space. You can see in the completed floor plan view, this is what the space will look like, and then in 3D, you can see the completed space. Now specifically, I'm gonna go through and move the walls out if I superimpose the as-built over the top of the remodel. You can see this wall. I'm gonna move this over. I'm going to open up an existing project that already has the side kitchen wall completed and then we'll focus on laying out this back wall in here. So let's go in and kind of get started with the process to create the new larger space. You can see the new remodel space. I've highlighted it in blue. I've also used the reference display to show you the completed remodel plan. It shows up with orange walls. Let's zoom into this area right in here and take a look at the process. To begin with, you can see that I've hatched the wall that needs to be demoed or removed. To create that demo process, I'm going to click on the wall and then I'm going to use the break tool that you're going to find in your lower edit menu. I'll just hover my mouse over it. It's the break tool. Also the number three on the keyboard is a shortcut for it. Using this break tool, I'm going to come up. I'm going to put a notch right in this area. And then using the same break tool, we'll put a notch right in this area. At that point, what I'm going to do is that wall, instead of deleting it, I'm just going to actually draw a marquee around all of those components and just slide it down to the approximate location where the new wall should be located. Press the space bar, and I'm going to take the wall, use the diamond at the very end, move same wall type, and then we'll snap it into place, and then we'll just do the same thing over in this area. Again, I'm just going to use the approximate tracing approach in here. I'm not going to be too exact, and I'm just going to trace out the new space, and then maybe pull that over and snap it into place right in there. Now, it's good practice when you take your as-builts as I've done here and I've done some modification. I'm going to actually save this. I'm going to come into my menu and do a file save as. I'm going to take this plan instead of calling it the as built I'm just going to call it the remodel project that way I'm actually working on a brand new file called remodel. I'm now going to change the floor plan from this plan view to the floor plan and place some dimensions on here. You'll notice that some of the layers get turned on and turned off in this new plan view controls your layer set. I'm going to use the tool for automatic exterior dimensions. Using this tool I'm going to slide over to the left of my screen. I'll go ahead and place those dimensions, zoom out just a little bit, and now I want to make sure that I square up these dimensions exactly. And really for this bottom wall or the end wall down here, all I want to do is take that wall and I'm going to make it exactly 18 feet. And for the most part, I'm going to accept the rest of those dimensions off to the side over here. What I will do is take this wall that's an interior wall and just pull that down and make sure those two snap and we'll delete that extra room type. 
I'm not going to worry about drawing the extra walls in here that would support the pantry or the other rooms for the purpose of the video. And now I have the basic new expanded floor plan shell. If we take a look at what's happened in the 3D view, you can see that we pushed the wall out. Originally was in this area right here. We pushed that wall out and then we also added a little area in here. You'll notice an indentation on the walls. And if we go over to the full camera view, the roof initially is cutting into those walls and what we want to do is rebuild the roof and then create a shed style roof that will come in here and support a nice vaulted ceiling. To do that I'm going to let the program rebuild the roof automatically so I'm going to come into the build menu down to roof and build roof. At this point I'm going to come in there's a number of different styles you can build eventually we want to get to the shed style roof right in here. Let's go ahead and take a look at turning on our automatic roof. It's at a current 3 and 12 pitch. I'm going to leave the overhang information and the other options left as is. At this point you can see the roof and we want to go through the process and create a shed style roof. Really as we rotate around we want the shed, the low end of the shed to be over on the left hand side and then the high end shed over on the right hand side. The process to do that is to select the end walls. Remember I have the automatic roof on. Select the end wall and there's a toggle in my lower menu called change to a full gable wall. And when I do that you can see that end wall becomes a full gable. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Take this wall, use that toggle, change to gable wall and at that point I have two gables on each end. As I rotate back around to create a full shed roof Let's do this. I'm going to click on the side wall over here. You can see the wall selection and then we'll just slide over a little bit, hold my shift key down and grab the other wall. Both walls are now selected. You can use the open button. This is in the far left hand section of my menu. Open those two walls and then you're going to find a section over on the roof panel and I'm going to change it to be a high shed gable wall. High shed gable wall. And now you can see what we've done here is we've created that shed gable on the end. I'm not going to really worry about this roof structure off to the side. The main scope of the project is to focus just on having a shed ceiling and a vault inside of the kitchen and if you kind of scroll in using the wheel on the mouse you can see that the default ceiling in this case is a flat ceiling. And what I want to do is click toward the floor and double click to open up the room. And one of the options you're going to find is to remove the flat ceiling out of this room. So let me do that process. Remove the flat ceiling out of the room. And what happens in this case is the ceiling will now follow the roof structure. And as we scroll in just a little bit, you can actually see this vault and this peak from the roof. And we're going to need to take care of that using a custom ceiling plane that will match the outside of the roof but avoid and fill in this extra peak. The other thing that I want to do is I want to take these walls that were in here and I want to make them a solid railing wall so that they don't go all the way up to the top. So again I'm going to click on this left wall, hold my shift key down, click on the other wall and then use the open key and I'm going to change these underneath the general panel of the wall to be a railing wall and then on the newels and balusters is really where you can kind of specify how high these walls are and this perceived ceiling height which would be kind of over here on the left is really a 10 foot ceiling and I'm going to make those walls to be 10 feet. You can control that wall height when they're railings on the newels and balusters. The other thing I might do is underneath the wall cap put a nice finish on the top of the wall finish so we'll go in add new and I'm just going to come down to moldings and profiles and select a very simple profile that would be flat on top. And then I'm going to leave the default width and height for that wall cap. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a custom ceiling plane. Let's go back over into the floor plan view and I actually have a specific saved plan view for ceilings. Let's go up into our saved plan view drop down and as we come down there's a specific save plan view for ceilings. If you want to watch the save plan view videos what it's doing is it's actually controlling your layer set and default settings and as we switch this over to 
the ceiling say plan view you'll see a bunch of layers get turned off. You're going to find the ceiling tool up here in my upper menu. It's the icon with kind of the red roof on it. It's under roof tools. Over on the left hand side of my screen is the sub menu and it's the third tool down. It's called the ceiling plane. Your menu may be slightly different depending on what version of the program you're on. But I'm going to go ahead and select this tool. I'm just going to come down here, snap inside of the wall, and I'm just going to go part way up. Notice my cursor is up and then I'm going to go up slope and click. And I'm just going to do this partially in that area. A lot of people like to be very exact and sometimes it's difficult to get that to snap precisely where you want. So I just wanted to show you that you don't have to be exact to begin with. So let me do this. Let me just pull this over now. I'm going to snap to this wall. I'm going to zoom out with the scroll wheel on my mouse. Now I'm going to expand that shed ceiling all the way to the end of the wall. And now you can see it spans that entire wing from wall to wall. If you open this up, again use the open tool in the lower left hand section of your menu. And what I'm really looking for is the pitch. So you can see that the pitch matches the roof style that we built. It's 3 and 12 and you can change how this pivots and in here and also the absolute information or if it's from the floor and change any one of these and depending on where it locks you can control the pivot of it. This should work well for this example because we have the low end of the ceiling on the left hand side and the upper at the other side. So let's go ahead and close this. And then as I move back over into the 3D view, you can now see that ceiling plane has filled that space. And specifically, it filled this area right in here that had the extra gable peak in there. Now, if I move over to the already open dollhouse view, other thing that I want to do is I want to take these walls that form the stairwell, and I want to make them an open area. You'll notice that the front of the stair already has an open area for a railing. So I'm going to take the two walls, click, and then shift click to grab both walls, open them up. On the general panel, we're going to come in, mark that they are a railing wall. My default railing, you can see in this diagram over here on the right, is a very similar railing that we already have. And now we've just opened up that space. I might use the material eyedropper and paint the wall caps that we put in here. And for the most part, I think we have the shell ready to do some kitchen design. So I'm going to kind of move forward and skip a step. On this side wall over in the back, I'm going to open up a plan that already has this completed with the kitchen cabinets laid out. And then I'm going to go through the process and lay out this back wall using similar style of cabinets. So let me just kind of skip ahead and I'm going to open up a variation of this that has that completed side wall with cabinets in it. I'm going to create all of the cabinets and then the appliances back on this back wall. Here's a wall elevation of the completed process that I'm going to go through. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm just going to use my scroll wheel and slide over in here and I'm going to begin by using the base cabinet. As I place the first base cabinet, you're going to notice that it comes in with specific styles, countertops, hardware. These are all settings that are included in the default cabinet style that I've set up for this plan. You can always open up your library, browse out, and if I come down into the manufacturer catalog and choose one of these cabinet companies, you can always go in and find their door and drawer style. And it's a matter of simply finding the door style coming over here and applying it into the design. Let's go ahead and find one that looks a little bit different. It's a matter of finding the door style and then applying it and switching it out to the existing cabinet. So cabinets in Chief Architect are box and then to make it manufacture or custom it's a function of changing the door, wood species, and colors for those cabinets. So let me press undo a couple of times here and I'm just going to use this simple slab door and slab drawer for the cabinets. And I'm going to resize this particular cabinet. I'm going to resize it to 30 inches. When I finish, you're going to notice that the door style down in the lower section of the cabinet face changed to a double door. If you go into this cabinet and you take a look at this face item by clicking on it, you're going to notice that it's an auto left door. 
This face item will change to a double door approximately at 26 inches when you resize the cabinet. If you want to force it, you could call it to be a door right or a door left, and that will force it. If you have a manufacturer that does a 26, maybe even a 27 inch cabinet box with a single door swing, that's how you can control that. The auto will resize at about 26 inches. In the cabinet face items, I'm going to go ahead and click on the drawer for this elevation. You notice that it's highlighted, and I'm just going to press the delete option and remove that face item. So that leaves me with a 30 inch cabinet. Let's go ahead and place one more base cabinet right next to it. Cabinets bump and merge countertops when you slide them over in Chief Architect. I'm going to go ahead and set this to be 30 inches. Double click to open up the cabinet. And then again on the face items, I'm going to click on the doors at the bottom. I'm going to come over to the item type, change it to a drawer, and then I'm going to use this split horizontal. Each one of these face items you can easily resize. If you come down and you want to change any of those face items, you'll find the item height down in this area right in here. I'm going to slide these two cabinets against this side cabinet. This is kind of an interesting design here. If you take a look at this cabinet in the corner, I'll rotate around so you can see, it's actually going to serve as a storage compartment in the mudroom area off of the garage entryway. And what I want to do before I bump these two cabinets next to that side cabinet is I want to put a filler in here. And you're going to find that tool underneath the build menu, come down to cabinet filler, and I'm going to place a base filler. And let's just go ahead and slide in here, place the filler. You notice that it cuts out the molding in the back. This is truly just a filler. And I'm just going to come in here and resize it to be two inches probably easier to do that in the 2D view. I'm going to slide it against till it snaps against the side cabinet and then we'll just grab these two cabinets and then bump it over until it snaps into place and then we'll just do the same thing over here. We'll slide that over. So now I have the two base cabinets in place. I'm going to do the same process and do a few customizations for the wall cabinets. Using the wall cabinet tool Let's go ahead and place the first wall cabinet. Come in here. These are going to behave very similar to the base cabinets. Notice this came in with a crown molding on it, also a light rail. I might switch my view to be a vector view so you can see this a little bit easier since the cabinet is white. Now for this cabinet, what I want to do is resize it to 54 inches. Notice my temporary dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and slide this up. My cabinets are bumping in three inch increments. If you look at my temporary dimensions, you'll find that setting in your general cabinet defaults. You can always open up your cabinet and set it to a sixteenth of an inch. Or if you're doing custom work and you want your cabinets to bump in one inch increments, you'll find that in your general cabinet settings. Now that I've resized that to be a 54 inch box, I also want to make a set of double doors on this cabinet. Again, double click and go into the cabinet. I'm going to click on the face item and then I'm going to use a split horizontal. You can see that I have two sets of doors and on the upper face item, I'm going to change that to be an item height of 15 inches. Press the tab key, you get a preview of that. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make this a hopper door that will be glass. It will match the cabinet kind of off to the side of my screen over here above the refrigerator. So I'm going to take that door type that's an auto right door and let's drop that down and I'm looking for a hinge, a top hinge door. So go ahead and make that change. You can see the update and now I need to do a little bit of work with the hardware. You see how it pushes my handle clear off to the side over here. So I'm going to need to make a change on that. Make sure that that item, that face item is selected. Come over to the appliance door and drawer. Let's go ahead and click specify. Step number one, I want it to be a glass door. So I'm going to switch this to be a slab and then mark that it's glass. Can't really tell in the preview, but I've done those two things. And then on the door handle, instead of using the default, let's go ahead and click the library here. I'm going to choose a specific piece of hardware. You'll see that I have one in my library that's a larger pull. We'll go ahead and select that style of pull and then zoom in just a little bit you can see the centering of it and in from edge if you press 
zero in there, that should center it on that cabinet face item. Once we're finished here, let's go ahead and use the material eyedropper. I'm going to pick up this same style of glass, make sure I'm in component mode, which you'll notice in the far left hand corner, component mode. We'll just apply it to that face item. For the most part, that looks pretty good, and I want to create one more cabinet off to the side. So let's use this copy tool. I'm going to slide down, grab the copy tool, slide a copy of this over, and I want to resize this to be maybe 27 inches. And again, the same process of putting a filler in here. We have a filler on the base. Let's go in and put a filler for the wall cabinet. Come down to the filler for the wall cabinet. We'll place that, and again, I want to resize this to be 54 inches. And then let's see if we can zoom in here and get this dimension at 2 inches. And then we'll just bump that right against that cabinet. And then we'll bump the other two cabinets right against that filler. Grab both of those cabinets and bump those. At this point, I've got the two wall and base cabinets. I'm going to copy and reflect those around the cook range and then we'll create some symmetry. Before I do that and before I place the cook range, notice down here on this base cabinet I have an overhang in there. Maybe not be a big deal, but if you are trying to do a countertop takeoff and also want to make it look very realistic, open up that cabinet and you're going to find a setting underneath the general panel for the countertop. Uncheck the uniform on the right side of it. I'm just going to put a zero in there. If you zoom in on that dialog, you can see that it's trimmed it off. And now that will clip that off so when we put the cook range in there, it will then slide right in. So I'm going to come down to my favorites catalog. I'm just going to grab one of the cook ranges that we've got set up. I want to use an induction range, and maybe I'll just do a search for this. So this is a Wolf range. It's an IR36 th and it looks like it pops up right in here. I'm going to grab this range and then we'll just kind of slide that into place. I'll go ahead and bump it over. So that range looks pretty good and then let's just go ahead and also find a hood. Do a search for hood and let's go ahead and try this hood right in here. And I'm probably going to need to resize this hood. This is a pretty large hood that we just found in here. So let me grab this hood I'm going to just double click and I'm going to set the dimensions of it to be 36 and we'll adjust that in the wall elevation. We've made that hood pretty narrow. I'm going to use the center tool, pick up the center of the range, center it exactly in there, and now we have that cook hood in place. Now I want to have symmetry on both sides of the cook range. What I'm going to do is select the two base cabinets and the two wall cabinets. So I have four items selected. You can see that in my lower status bar down here in the lower left. And right above that is the copy tool. I'm going to use the copy, reflect about, find the cook range. You see the visual indicator. Once I click that, it will then place those cabinets right on the other side of that range. And one last thing before I go in and take a wall elevation. If you look at the side wall over here, I've created a soffit right above those cabinets. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this main wall. Using the cabinet tool, you're going to find a soffit tool. I'm just going to click right above that cabinet. That should fill that space in here. And what I'm going to do is just pull that over. We'll square this up in the wall elevation. And now you can see that it's come in. It may not match quite exactly what that other soffit is. So let's just check the value of it. Looks like it's six and a quarter inches in height, and then it's 114 and 7 eighths from the bottom. Let's go ahead and make sure that we use the same value for this soffit. So we'll come in here, and I'm just going to copy that value because I'll probably use that, but it was six and a quarter, so 6.25, and then we'll just make sure that that's the exact same dimension, and then that should make that soffit come in exact. Maybe pull that up and square up that hood right in that area. Now to create the wall elevation dimensions, go back into the floor plan view and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to use this tool specifically for elevations. You'll find this underneath the orthographic view tools and there's two tools in here you can use. One is the wall elevation and one is 
the back clip section. Let's take a look at both of these views and look at what the difference is. The wall is typically going to restrict it to just a single wall in a room. And you can see in this case, this is a nice clean view of that wall. Notice that you can't see the shed ceiling above that. And if we go back in and we use the other tool, let's go back in and use this section view or back clip section view and cut a view through here. This is going to now show you that added attic wall and you may be saying well where are the cabinets and in this case you see my section layer set it's coming in the section view I'm going to switch that to the kitchen and bath elevation view that should turn all of those cabinets and now you can see that view and it gives you this upper attic wall view that the wall elevation just simply cuts that off I'm going to use this view to create the dimensions. Let me turn off my crosshairs in here and I'm just going to kind of square up this soffit. One of the easiest ways to create your dimension elevations is to use the automatic dimension tool, specifically the auto NKBA dimension tool. You'll find it off to the left hand side of my screen. When you use this tool, usually the dimensions come in pretty well. I usually find that it requires a little bit of cleanup. Let's begin by coming down to the bottom area down in here and I do toggle my crosshairs on just to make sure that I can square these things up. For the centerline dimension for this cook range, I'm going to pull that up. If I had multiple appliances in here, I might end up putting a microwave drawer in here. I could use my crosshairs and then pull up that extension line right into that appliance. They could all be level and if you take a look at my completed one, this is kind of the way it looks. The bottom ex dimensions look pretty good. You can click on these numbers and slide them around, do a little bit of cleanup. Again, this is kind of a preference thing. And then on the left hand side, if I come in here, notice that there's a bunch of dimensions in here. If you want to modify these dimensions in any way, let's assume you don't want the toe kick or the countertop dimensioned. Let's just click on this diamond, pull it off slightly. Notice that extension disappears. And if I do the same thing on the countertop, notice that that dimension is now a nice clean 36 inch dimension for that cabinet. So you can either add these dimensions by clicking on the dimension line, notice that there's an extra diamond right where I clicked and I can pull that down. If I put it back onto the toe kick, you can easily add those back. So if you decide that you've created a situation where you removed a dimension, it's very easy to add it back on. Now, one of the things that I like to do is also put a cross hatch box on this cabinet. Notice this full height cabinet on the left here has a bunch of shelving in here because of where we cut it. You can always adjust this back in your floor plan view if you go back in there and you come in and try to get this exact. You may find that it's easy to maybe do that and we go back in and you can find it and cut it exact but you may find that it's difficult because you have wall cabinets and base cabinets and it's not always easy to do that. A lot of times what I'll do is underneath your CAD tool, there's a cross hatch box. And if you wanted to, I'll just do it for the soffit up here that's on the other side so you can see how that works. You can use that cross box and create a nice clean view. Again, here's my completed view. You can see what I've done here to create the uh, cross hatch box. Now, I noticed that because I have a half wall on the other side over here, notice that I don't have an end to end dimension. What I'm going to do is use my end-to-end -end dimension and get that wall length over here. So using the ruler tool, I'm going to come over and I'm going to use this dimension called end-to-end -end dimension. We'll just come in, pick this up, and go from end-to-end. -end, and then we'll pull that dimension over into that area to get that dimension strength. Maybe that you want to go all the way to the top of the soffit. You could easily pull that up and then that matches exactly what that ceiling height is. Again, this is a shed ceiling. So this looks pretty good. You can go through, you may decide that that center line above the cook hood isn't necessary. We could pull that down and remove that extra center line. And then if we zoom in a little bit, you'll find a backsplash tool. Notice that none of my cabinets, wall or base, have a backsplash on them. 
I like to use the explicit backsplash tool. You'll find that tool underneath your cabinet settings and it's the bottom tool on the left hand side of my screen custom backsplash click in here click on the wall and then that backsplash will then place you can easily resize this if you want to make if I just come in here and show you just there's crazy shapes you can add in here so if you wanted to shape this in any way and pull it around you can create lots of different shapes with that backsplash and I'm just gonna kinda of press the undo button a couple times pull that up to the top of the soffit and then again zoom in and make sure that we have that hood right at the top of the soffit as well so that looks pretty clean to place the kitchen island I'm gonna go back into the floor plan view you can build the island with assembling the cabinets as we did on that back wall one of the things that I've done is I've actually saved that island into my library if I clear out the search for the cook hood and I come down to my library I've created a folder for this project called kitchen if I click on that folder come down you'll see my kitchen island and then I can simply grab that island come over here place it into the design and then using the temporary dimensions that are displayed you see these temporary dimensions that come up I'm just gonna come in here I'll put in 46 inches on this side and then if we click on the top I'll do the same thing 46 inches to be exact you're probably gonna to wanna to unblock this island and then you can run your dimensions explicitly let's go back in and take a look in 3D so I'll toggle my camera back from this vector style view to the standard view and here's what we've been able to come up with final component for the kitchen remodel is to provide options to your client and I'm just going to open up the completed version I've done a few interesting things in here I'm going to show you just real briefly how the style palette tool works the style palette tool allows you to quickly change options for cabinets doors windows and your floor and wall covering materials you can create and save style palettes in your library as I've done with these five different options and then to apply the different options you can select it make sure the scoping mode that you'll find in the lower section is based on room you can also apply it based on floor and plan once you click in the room you can see the effects of that style palette and applying a different palette is simply a matter of creating and storing that option palette in your library to create options for your clients we dedicated a webinar to the style palette which you can watch as well as other videos to learn more about using this powerful tool to create options for your client I hope you found the kitchen remodeling session valuable to practice these steps in a video we have posted the chief challenge file so you can repeat these same steps and then share your results on social media using the hashtag chief challenge and so that kind of wraps up the completion for the seminar today I'll show you the completed layout that I ended up for the project you can see that I took a couple of the renderings pushed it out this is a 24 by 36 push that out to a layout sheet a layout sheet in chief architect is merely where you organize your drawings took the floor plan view with the dimensions on there and then the different elevations once I had them cleaned up and added the dimensions cut the island and then also included the cabinet schedule with that I'm going to get ready to hand this over to Carrie she's going to curate some some questions from you if you want to uh, raise your hand if you've already raised your hand maybe unraise it if you had some previous questions and then we're going to go through and talk about it as she's getting ready to do that I'm just going to talk real quickly about some of our resources we are doing these free webinars they're currently scheduled for the next several Thursdays you can find a link to those on the website if I were to open up the website let me just pull that over here from our main site come down to live webinars and next week we'll be doing the bathroom remodeling session and then the following week we've got a boot camp as well as a remodeling edition and framing materials list and then we are also doing virtual training seminars. These are a full 
16-hour seminar. We typically do these over four days, four hours per day. And we actually have one going off next Wednesday. And if you're interested in signing up for that, we, we are doing it at a 20% discount. We have a kitchens, baths, and interior class next Wednesday. We also have a residential intermediate class next Wednesday. So take advantage of those resources. We also have a number of other things, on-demand classes, one-on-one -on -one training, playlists, how-to articles, and Chief Talk. With that, I'm gonna see if we uh, pass this back over to Carrie, see if we have questions that were covered in today's seminar, and then you can unmute your mic and, and feel free to ask. Thank you, Scott. Uh, we have a question from William Carpenter. William, just go ahead and unmute yourself and let us know what you want to know. I noticed that when you're replacing, when you got ready to do your appliances, instead of having to go to library and drop down and drop down and drop down, you went two clicks and there you were, you had your wolf and you had your hood. There's some shortcut there I didn't, I don't know. Except yeah, sure. There, starting directly to the library and taking all those steps. Yeah. So let's take a look. Let me move back over into the program here. And let's grab the plan we were working on. So when I placed the range in the hood, one of the things that I did, um, first of all, in my user catalog, I sometimes will create favorite folders. And one of the things that I typically will do is I have a kitchen short list and I'll put some of my favorite things in here and that I typically might use. And then it's just a matter of grabbing it and finding it. Um, we have manufacturers. I use the Wolf range and sometimes I like to use a particular manufacturer. If I don't know their part number, you know, you can come down, browse through it, find, you know, I think I was in the induction range. And in this case, I use that IR36TH. And if you kind of see that on my screen here, if you know a part number, what I did in that case is I typed in IR-36 and then it starts to autocomplete for you. So if you're a bad speller or don't have the full part number, you can find it by just using the search. You can grab it and then simply place it from that approach. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks for thanks for attending today. Pat, we have a question from April O'Brien. April, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Sirius. Is there going to be a recording of this set webinar? I just got back from a client meeting and I'm so bummed out that I missed it. This was the one I've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, um, no problem, April. What you can do on our website here. If you go to the main website underneath the user center, I think we'll also chat this out, is a link for training videos. And at the bottom left-hand section of that menu, you can come down here and there's the recorded live webinars. Okay. And you'll find a copy of the webinars that we've been doing um, in this area right here. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Thanks for jumping in and attending a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see the whole thing. We have a question from Ute Vandenberg. Hi, Ute. Hi. I have a quick question. If it's possible to sort the manufacturer catalogs by categories, such as mm. flooring, cabinetry, um, any sort, because sometimes I'm looking for a material and I have to scroll up and down. Uh, it would make it easier if I could sort the manufacturer's catalog too. Is there an option? The catalogs for manufacturers come in alphabetic as you scroll in here. I, mm -hmm. I, have, I have a handful of them loaded. The other thing you can do, if we came into Gen Air, you can search a specific folder. So if you just wanted to search within Gen Air, you could right click on that and search in here for, um, you know, if you were searching for a range or something like that, you can restrict the search to the Gen Air ranges and do it that way. I might, I might just pause here, and I believe Adrian, that manages a lot of our content, should be maybe can weigh in and, and offer another suggestion here. Sure. Um, 
a few options are in your library filters. Uh, there you can filter by type. Um, sorry, in the search, well, yeah, this is one way to do it too. So you can make custom filters where you can, if you know um, that sometimes you only want to search for materials or only fixtures, you can make a custom filter here called like maybe brand um, appliances or something like that. And then you can choose which of those catalogs are searched when you're in that mode. So that would be one additional way to do it. And then another option is while you're doing a, a regular search on your entire library, um, there is that type option, Scott, you move right close to it. If you expand that out, then you're able to choose um, for your results to only include things like maybe hardware or materials or um, uh, furniture or whatever it is that the, the actual type of object is. So that's a, another secondary way. And then the third way would be you can always create shortcuts in your user catalog, um, which maybe Scott has hit on that a little bit, but um, that's where you can just curate your own favorites using um, shortcuts and creating kind of custom links to some of your favorite uh, groupings. So those are would be my main suggestions right now. Okay. So just the items that I use a lot, I saw Scott earlier, he did his own own library of this most preferred yeah. items he uses because sometimes it can be very long to find the yeah. right item I, I'm looking for. Yeah, what what I do, Ute, in building mine, let's say that you found a favorite um, built-in coffee machine. You can always, what I'll do is I'll right click on that, make a copy of it in this case. So if I make a copy okay. of this particular one, then in my own user folder, what I can do is, let's make sure I shrink that. I can come down to my own user catalog, just right click, paste, and then it shows up in my user catalog. I may have a, and I've done this, um, a, a specialty appliance section for kitchen. And if you, if I were to show you what my kitchen short list is, here's what I've done to create those things. And in this case, here's a Gen Air microwave or you know one of the new wash wash stations that's out. And that way, if you're if it's something that you use frequently or it has a common size that you use, then that may be one way to to create a commonly used folder and make it quick to select things. That's a very good idea. Thank you. You bet. Scott, we have a question from Patrick DeBono. Hi, Patrick. Hey, how you doing? Question for you. When you did the, I think you called it a copy and reflect around the stove. Uh huh. From elevation view, um, we had, you had eliminated the overhang so that the stove was there, right? And I may have missed it, but I'm not, I'm new, a new user, mind you, to Chief. When sure. you look at elevation view, there's a one inch overhang on the right side. But if you copied and reflected that, should there, how did it know that the overhang should exist? Because it didn't yeah, exist at the stove. Great question. Let's open up the elevation view. I just kind of pulled the cook hood out of the way. Let's open up that elevation view and take a look at it. So you'll notice, let's just delete that cook range so it's in the way. You'll notice that, in fact, what happened was when it did the copy reflect, I only changed the cabinet on the left side, right? And when I did the copy reflect, it turns out this cabinet over here still has an overhang when you pull it away, but the overhang doesn't exist on the left. So that's the nice thing about copy reflect. It's gonna take the attributes and switch them as it reflects it and moves it over. Okay, so then in this reflect, copy and reflect, it was, countertop to edge of cabinet on the left mm -hmm. and on the right, but it still shows the overhang. It just knows intuitively to do that. Well, it no, yeah, it, it that's the whole thing of copy and reflect. And then when you bump this cabinet over, it also merges the countertop. Okay. And if you make, I use it also if you're doing an island and you know, on the end of your island, you have an end panel. And then on the other side of the island, you're going to have an end panel, but one's on the right side, one's on the left side. To save a little bit of time, I'll just take one of the cabinets, modify the left side, put an end panel on it, copy and reflect it. Maybe it's not even symmetrical and I have to move it, but when I copy and reflect it, it'll put the end panel on the opposite side. 
Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Kerry was helpful in trying to explain it by typing, but that explanation yeah. was a little clearer. Thanks. <laughs> you bet. Sometimes it's difficult to write those things out. Thanks, Patrick. Hey, Scott, we have a question from Cynthia Walden. Hi, Cynthia. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Uh, my question is on side panels. Okay. Uh, having trouble in controlling, let's just say, a tall um, cabinet that's got like a cope and stick style doors. And then I want one of the side panels to um, have the same like heights of panels and the same style but when i do you know match the side panel to the front it includes the door hardware and i can't delete the door hardware or if i just do put panel on the side it's just showing a flat slab panel not the cope and stick so anyway sure so let's take a look at i just placed a um a full height cabinet here and it was Cynthia right yes where, where are you calling from today uh Los Altos California okay welcome Thanks. so I placed a uh, a cabinet that is a tall height cabinet and let's say we want an end panel on this and one of the things you can do I just have slab doors let's see if we can grab a framed door in here I can grab one real quick. So let's see, let me go in and grab a framed panel door. Okay, so I put a framed panel door on the front and one of the ways you can do this is you can open up the cabinet and there is an option that on the front sides and back, we come over to let's say the right side over here right there is an option that says you can match the front and if we rotate around in the dialogue you'll see that it matches the front and of course that's a little weird because you now have an operable set of doors and maybe that's what you want maybe it probably isn't yeah that's not what i want i want to get rid of the hinges and i want to get rid of the uh, yeah. The door handles yeah but this may be a quick way to at least get the symmetry because notice that it has the symmetry where the door split is in this case right so what i could do now is i could say you know let's make this a custom face and what it does is it still has that symmetry and what i can do is just grab this left instead of it having a left door, I can put it as a left side panel and you can either do it as applied or inset. And then, of course, it's gonna lose my door style, but that's okay. And then we'll just make the same change as a applied. And then I can grab that same door out of the library, I think, and then just replace it. Okay. So that's at least one way to get the symmetry using the match front but then going in and changing it so it doesn't have the hardware on it to either an inset or an applied door style okay okay got it thank you does that work for you uh yeah it does thank you okay thanks for calling in today cynthia Scott, we have a question from diana shelbrack go ahead and unmute yourself diana and ask your question okay can you hear me okay hey diana how are you today I'm doing fine, Scott. I have a question. On your floor plan view, you had yeah. the overhang area transparent, and I didn't know. Not that view, it's the, uh, it just says, yeah, try the one next to the right, to the yeah, right there, yeah. Right okay, that yeah. one, you have like a clear, how did you get that done for the overhang? Yeah, um, a lot of times, this is a custom countertop, right, because okay. of, the, uh, of the shape of it. And you can kind of see how it's, you know, moving around here. And when you actually have a custom countertop, there is an option here for fill style. Okay. And what I typically will do, because I like to see the bar seating or maybe yeah, there's- Yeah, that's what noticed that, noticed that, yeah. There's an LED strip light, which I, I probably don't have that layer turned on for the electrical. What I do is I come down underneath this solid, 
material and I change the transparency and mine's 50%. If I were to reset it back to, you know, no transparency, then it takes mm. that off, right? So that's just a setting you can find in your transparency and you can type in a value there that allows you to then show the transparency in there. Okay, so it's not anything special just for the overhang part, it's just the whole countertop. Yeah, okay. and that's better really than, you know, I see some people have this issue where there's no transparency and the draw order, which if we were to switch that, let's just move that up. This looks a little odd where you have, yeah. <laughs> and that's a draw order. Yeah, but okay. I like to use the transparency setting to make that uh, countertop um, show through and, and uh, something more like this. I like that too, definitely. It definitely highlights that there's not cabinets underneath there very yeah. much. So, all right, yeah. thank you. You bet. You. Scott, we have a question from Di uh, um, Rosie Falez. Hi, Rosie. Hi. So I've got um, I, I've got a cup, couple of questions, if that's okay. Okay. Um, crown molding. Once you put a crown molding on, and uh, and or add a molding, and then what I'm trying to do is have it so that the reveal um is proud of the cabinet door front so cabinet doors so that so that yeah so that it's proud of that and i just i can't get it and then it automatically does the same for the sides of the cabinets so once I do that reveal on the on the front, let's say I want it, um, you know, half an inch um, proud of the doors, then it's hanging over the side of the cabinet by, um, you know, let's say, well, three quarters plus a half. So um an inch and a quarter over the t over the sides, and then there it creates a hole. What's an easy way to get that front reveal? Um, I think one way that that you can have you have you used the offsets on the cabinet with the yes, board? I mean that's what I'm talking about is using the offsets and okay. it, it automatically does the sides when I do the front. Okay. Like, or the sorry the horizontal offset. Mm -hmm goes you know throughout the cat throughout you know on both the sides and the okay on the front does that make sense well your your side control if i kind of move around here that's going to overlap it will also disappear if you bump it you know if i bump right. this cabinet over to the other side right it will disappear on the other side once it's bumped into that cabinet and are you are you suggesting in this case you see how my i guess my crown really isn't sticking out past the door no right no it's inset it's, yeah, or it's you, flush with the case yeah if we i like to use one of these tools um let's just use our section camera and let's just cut a small section through that cabinet uh and make sure the layers turned on for this so let's just go in, make sure that layer is turned on. And in this case, what I think what you're asking is you'd like to see the molding extend out past the door? Yes, like like even like a quarter inch, right? So that there's that little bit of that reveal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you let's say that you want to extend it past exactly a quarter inch here's what i'm going to do to know that it's exactly a quarter inch i'm going to use my line tool um where's my line let's grab a line i'm just going to draw a line that's exactly a quarter inch and i'm just going to press the tab key as i do this 0.25 so i know that this line is exactly a quarter inch past there and if we were to measure this approximately using the tape measure tool 
that looks like it's one inch out. Okay. So that tells me I need to change the offset of this molding to be an additional inch. Let's go back into that cabinet. And I'm going to take that horizontal offset, zoom in so we can see this, maybe turn around. We can kind of slide this in there. And if you mm -hmm. take and put in um, one inch in here, you see it pop out? Yeah. So that's going to control it on the front, right? And uh, yeah, well, uh, my measurement apparently was off. But that's going to control it on the front. Are you also asking you don't want it to be that far out on the side? Exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> you in that case would need to probably use a molding polyline and not put a molding on the cabinet. And then you can control exactly the way that works. And roughly, okay. have you used a molding polyline before? No. So if I were to use the line tool, and I'm not going to try to be exact in here, but I'm just going to use a line tool. And I can convert that line to a molding. So you can grab mm -hmm. that line. I can convert it to a molding. There's a little convert to molding down here. Right. Right. And then you can, let's put it up 99 inches and grab a molding. We'll just grab a simple one. And let's make it big enough so that we see it. Six inches, eight inches, fine. Mm -hmm. okay. So now I have this molding, and let's see if we can see this in 3D. Yeah, okay. So here's this molding, right, floating out in space. And if you want to control that, you can go into the plan view at that point, and you could move it in slightly. So it can be fatter on one side and skinnier on the other side. Okay. Okay. And so you now, could just tr simply can, trace around your cabinets, right? And slide this all the way down, slide this up, and then okay. you can control the way that that's going to work. Scott, okay. can I uh, add something here? Please, yeah, please do. Al? Um, you, If you want to do a quick and dirty, just drop a three-inch soffit on top of the cabinet, put the molding on the, ca on the soffit. So you can pull the, pull the soffit out beyond the cabinet, do whatever you need to do. And the molding just follows the soffit rather than the cabinet. Oh, that's, okay. that, that's clever, yeah. Okay. All right, Good. so the, okay, soffit, the, soffit, the soffit sits flush on the sides, hangs out an inch over the doors at the front. And then when the molding goes on the soffit, it just does what you want it to do. Thank you. And then um, also, uh, I had another question, which is kind of, well, related. Um, when you put a wall filler on mm -hmm. um, versus a, a side panel, um, I, I want to do the side panel that has the molding, the molding already on it. So, but that only comes up with a wall filler. Um, so, but when you put it on the side of the, so if you put a wall filler on the side of that end cabinet, um, it'll show, it'll just be um, like it'll have an, uh, an empty side to it. Like, so how do I fill that in? to make it a full panel on this on well, the side of the cabinet. If I yeah, fillers are fillers. Or should I just use the panel and then add yeah. the panel? So a filler is a filler and as you can see in this example there is no side to it. Yeah. Uh okay. and if you want to have that you know filled but only two inches right and you could use a wall cabinet make it two inches in thickness right if we were to use okay. a wall cabinet in here you there's no reason that you can't select this <clears throat> let's just grab it real quick and then i could just simply click on the front 
delete the face items off. Just kind of delete these. And I think that's about it. And then I could make this width two inches. And now it's solid. Okay. Is that what you're after? Yeah, I never thought of that. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, well, thanks for calling in. Let cool, me, thank uh, you. Thanks for calling. Uh, let me pause here and see if any of the uh, chief staff have any comments here. A Adrian or? Yeah, I had a quick comment. Uh, Scott, after you place your filler, you can open up the filler itself and uncheck a uh, checkbox and it will put the sides right on for you. Well, there you have it. So that looks like it was even faster. Thanks, Adrian. Scott, we have a question from Lindsay Gibson. Hi, Lindsay, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Scott, how are you doing? Hey, Lindsay, where are you calling from today? Um, I'm in Kansas City. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question on, um, say you have a, a your tall cabinet there with um, a really tall door, say it's 65 inches tall. Um, and I wanted that to look like two panels instead of one panel. How do I how do I divide that to have just a rail, not actually divide the doors, but to actually just look like two panels? Are you talking about like on the side here, Lindsay? No, actually on the front. So on the front where like if it's a shaker door and I wanted it to, to be a single door but look like two panels, how do I add oh. a center rail? Well, um, if it's a single door, let's just maybe mess with um, mess with it a little bit. Let's take the upper one, and if it were a single door, right? And if we go in, and I think that could be a door style. Adrian may have to jump in here. I believe you'll find them in um, a bonus catalog. We have a few double panel cabinet doors. Okay. And I've, I've I've done it that way before, where I just add a door styling onto it with a double panel. But it you know sometimes it, it'll change that interior detail to make it look like a different style than the default style. And I just didn't know if there was an easier way to add a, just a center rail, or, or if there was not an easier way for that. Well, I think. I, in my opinion, I think one of the easier ways, Adrian, you said that was a uh, a bonus catalog. Right. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, I think the concern that it doesn't match exactly whatever the door style was that you, you start with, um, you really just need to have a custom, <clears throat> excuse me, symbol that has the second panel built into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't see it off the top of my head. The, ne the next catalog down from where you are right now. Double panel doors? Yep. That's probably as close as I get. And yeah, notice okay. it change, <clears throat> changes the bottom one too, so I'd have to probably go in and just swap that out for the top one if I wanted to change it. The okay. other thing, Lindsay, that you can do uh, is you could draw your own door, you can create your own door, you can also go into an elevation view. Sometimes sometimes I've done that where you can just open up an elevation view and actually draw that yourself. Let's see, let's go into that elevation view. And what I might do in that case is just kind of draw, I'm gonna use a polyline solid and draw something that looks like that and just put it right over the front of the door. Does that show up in the, it, you have to turn it to a solid then for it to show up in the rendering then, correct? It should show up in the rendering. It depends on where I drew it. Uh, let's see if it's showing up here. Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay, great. That, that's perfect. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. You bet. Scott, we have a question um, from Farouk Patel. Hi, Farouk. Hello. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much, you guys, running the show because I didn't see uh, something like this, you know, in any other software. 
where I, I paid one of the software five thousand dollar but like what you guys you doing that's something awesome so thank you very much now quick question regarding lightings you know when you put the self on the wall and there are three self like three tier one on, on each on above another uh, when you put the lights there underneath is a problem like how to control that just the shelf uh, tool and then shelf it. tool yeah. and then put it put it on the wall okay now more two three right one yeah, yeah. Oh, and there is okay, another sure. underneath yeah, well. mm -hmm. and then when we try to put you know the any lights there is a problem you want to have you want to have lights underneath the shelves yeah what we're doing here for you know the family uh you know tv units like that you can either use a puck light or an led strip light puck light okay and if we come in let's do a search for puck light and let's grab that puck let's place it in our floor plan view Let me switch my view over to electrical so we know what we're doing. And I'm just gonna pull these over. All right, so I'm gonna place this puck light and deliberately I'm gonna place it kind of out here so it's not underneath the shelf. Okay. And make sure that, where is it? There it is, well, I was way off. So let's pull it down and it's gonna be easier probably to grab this in elevation view. There we go should have done that in the first place. So there's your puck light, and now I can use the same multiple copy, the interval I should still have in the same as the shelf. And in theory, there they are, and I can just move those back into the plan view, and slide them underneath the shelf. That's why I sometimes will put them out so it's easy to get them. Okay, and then, yeah, sure, thanks. And one more question regarding, you know the puck light in the, Cabinet version is a uh, top, you know, that uh, glass door. Yeah. If you want to put inside, the same sure. process? Same process. I think it's easiest to, uh, let's just grab one of those pucks there. Let's just place it out. Again, I like to place it out. And then if we take our elevation view, let's zoom out here just a little bit. Well, I got a lot of stuff open. Let me close a couple of those. It's okay. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe next, you know, 2013, uh, when if it is a dedicated unit, there's some lights for cabinets. You want an option that you could easily put lights in the cabinet by opening up the cabinet and says has lights. Exactly. I was using before 2020, and they have uh, like uh, lights, puck lights for inside the cabinet. Some are underneath the cabinets, right? So it's going to be easy. They are not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like these are when we're moving. Sometimes it's going, you know, to, on the ceiling, and then sometimes like we just searching okay. where it's going. And then yeah. one last question: uh, full height corner cabinet. I want is open. Sure. And I don't I, want I don't want any you know uh, post in between you know that angle. Mm -hmm. Like uh, is it a ninety degree? Oh, you want oh, you want a pie front? No. Uh, yeah. No. Uncheck the diagonal. Yeah, that one. Yeah. And then let's make it open. And so you can click on the face item right and change that to an opening. Is that what you're after? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then there is you know, when there is a post in in the center. Oh, you don't want a post in the center. Yeah, that's my question. Scott. Uh oh. Yeah, go ahead, Al. Um, take the cabinet, put it in a regular plan, just by itself. Use the surface deleter, knock out that center post, and save it as a symbol. Yeah. There you go. So you know let's. Let's see if that works. Let's use the surface deleter. I don't know if I can get it right. There we go. 
Anyways, that might take me a little while to do. Al's suggesting to just take that cabinet and convert it to a symbol after you've deleted that post using this delete surface tool. And you see how I delete the side of it. It might take me a while to get that center post, but once you delete these things, you can grab these cabinets and convert them to a symbol, and then you could add it into your own library, Farouk. Scott, we have a question from Patricia Beltran. Hi, Patricia, go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, hi, can you hear me? Hi, Patricia. Hey, how are you? Good, where are you um, calling from? Yeah, I'm actually from Western Florida, and it's the first time that I'm actually using Chief Architect. It has been almost like a month, so I'm new on it. And I'm building a cabinet right now. It's actually in my kitchen that when I go to the ceiling, my ceiling is not flat. So it's uh, like a shed roofy. So okay. when I yep. place my cabinets all the way up, my uh, crown molding is having like a little gap between that angle on the roof. Uh, so okay. I don't know how I can make that little piece like go all the way up, you know? So I don't know if you can understand me, but my roof is not, my, my ceiling is not flat. Okay. Let's see if we can take a view in here. Let me delete you this You have last that other side of your plan that has a shed roofing, but you're doing this side that your cabinet doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling, but the other side is the lower side of your shed roofing. So mm -hmm. that's my, my side of my kitchen. Yeah, let's just take an elevation view so we can see a uh, shed roof in here. Uh -huh. And looks like I got a bunch of windows in there. That's okay. Just to delete a couple of things in here. Uh -huh. And so what you've got is a cabinet that goes in here and you want the yeah. molding to follow. Yeah, I want so, the cabinets to go all the way up. Mm -hmm. But you want an angled top to the cabinet? Um, I actually have both situations in, in like like this view, like you're putting that. And as a section, if you put the another one looking towards the another wall mm -hmm. and your cabinet goes all the way up. I have mm -hmm. my, my kitchen is right there in that, that angle. So I have both uh -huh. situations. Right. But in this situation, are mm -hmm. you suggesting that you want, let me just, okay. Uh -huh. So in this case where I have the cabinet, I'm trying to understand exactly, you want the crown molding to follow the slope of the ceiling yeah. here? I don't know if I can just put a fake cabinet on the top or something, just a box in there, how I could just create that box that follows that shape on the top, just to yeah. fill up like a filler kind of thing on the top. Sure. Um, Al, you want to jump in here? Sure. Uh, the box on the top, uh, first off, if the cabinet goes up a little higher or lower or whatever, uh, your only real option here uh, is either going to be a soffit or a polyline solid. Uh -huh. uh, if it's a soffit, you put the soffit in so that the back of the soffit is at the low side of the roof. You tell the soffit it's a slope soffit and it follows the roof. Uh, that's uh, not maximum flexibility, but if you really want the good flexibility, simply use a polyline solid in the elevation, uh, make it 24 inches deep or 12 inches deep or whatever it has to be, and use that as the filler between the underside of the roof and the cabinet. Mm -hmm. If there's molding on it, you're gonna to have to use a 3D molding polyline okay, to create that molding. So there's the polyline solid, and we just drag it up and have it follow the roof. Paint it the same as the cabinetry, uh -huh. and that should do it. Solid. Okay. Perfect. Does that help? Is that, it? that helps a lot. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, you'll you'll have to do that with a tool other than the cabinet because we can't do a sloped cabinet. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, yeah. I mean, Al suggested you can also use a soffit. Soffits can be when you place a soffit in a room. Uh -huh. We go back to the floor plan view and we place a soffit in here using the soffit tool. One mm -hmm. of the uh, things that you'll find, yeah, let's turn that on. Pull that across. Inside the soffit is an option to have it follow the ceiling. I believe that's underneath the general panel and it says place 
and follow underneath the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And you see how it slopes automatically for you? Yes. Uh huh. Yep. And then I can pull that down into the room. It's probably not a very steep one, but that should then be following the room. And it's tough to tell because that soffit's up in here, buried mm -hmm. in my post. But you can see that added line right in here. Yeah. To that yeah. post. But I got the yeah. concept. I'm gonna keep, like you know, keep playing with it and keep trying because as I as I mentioned to you, um, chief architect is new for me. I had done a lot of things. I did my whole house right now, like the plan, and I'm putting things in. And mm -hmm. because the roof is the shed roof, it's a little bit more tricky for me as a newer user. <laughs> sure. So, but thank you so much. You bet. Thanks for calling, Patricia. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, feel free to raise your hand. Um, we had somebody write in, Scott, and ask, um, could you demonstrate how to place a sink using the hole in a countertop tool? OK. So if I understand correctly, let's just kind of throw a cabinet in the middle here. Was it the, well, when you have a cabinet and you place an undermount sink, it will automatically cut through the cabinet itself automatically. And was the question, Carrie, how do you create a hole in that countertop and then draw your own custom sink? Yes. Okay. Um, so step one is to put a hole in this cabinet countertop. I currently would need to convert this to an automatic countertop to do that. There's a tool to do that, generate automatic countertop, and we'll just make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. There's a hole tool that you can use once you highlight the countertop, and then that can be shaped and resized depending on what you have. And you know you can use the CAD tools to shape and create really anything unique that you want. And if you have a matching sink, um, maybe an apron sink or something you want to put underneath of this, then you can you can place that sink individually. Great, thank you. We have a question from Ralph Graw. Go ahead and unmute yourself, and you can ask your question. Uh, hi, I. Uh... It's more of a comment uh, than a than a question, really. I uh, I remodeled my house in 1998 using a version of uh, Chief Architect that at the time was a uh, sort of the DIY companion product called 3M Architect that was marketed through Borland. And uh, I've kind of come back uh, to wanting to be involved in in some design of spaces and, and so forth again. And so I purchased the uh, I think you guys call it the Home Designer. Uh, version of the product and I, I gotta tell you it's uh, fascinating uh, to watch uh, somebody with skills <laughs> uh, work, work this product as well as uh, the incredible expansion of the version that I have much less the, you know, the deep architect version um, I, I just wanted to make that comment and in addition I I've, I've followed a path in my life uh, I was I got an engineering and then eventually computer science about a 40 year long IT career and, I, and there's a part of me that wishes I had uh, gone into architecture. And uh, I can tell you that if in 1978. <laughs> Be careful, uh, Ralph, you're dating yourself here. I'm dating myself. Uh, if anything like this had been available uh, back in those days, uh, I'd, I'd be an architect today. Uh, I, I'm absolutely loving. I've been through quite a variety of uh, the webinars so far and a few of these live um, uh, editions. And uh, I am absolutely fascinated. By this product, and I, I'm really looking forward to uh, to spend some time with it. I just want to say thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, Ralph. Where are you calling in from? I'm in I'm in North Carolina in uh, Raleigh. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, being a Chief Architect customer and attending today. Yeah, yeah. Thank y'all. Thank you very much. Kerry, we probably have time for two more questions. If uh, if there's anybody with their hand raised. We do have one more person with their hand raised. We have Robin Stewart. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Robin. Hi, yes. I just, just a comment for the last caller that he's better off being an engineer than an architect. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we, we struggle to feed ourselves right now. Um, so my question is a very benign and stupid one. Um, 
you know, I've been uh, using, well, I've been an AutoCAD, AutoCAD user forever um, and um, recently switched to Chief Architect this past winter after a, a failed attempt at Revit um, last year. So my question for you is you have some, you had some beadboard in one of your drawings. And when I attempt to add wainscoting to the wall, there is a great, um, there's a, a great tool in um, Chief Architect to add the wainscoting. However, you're very limited to the colors that they have, which none of which I would be using in a project. I can, I've done, um, you know, in my user catalog, I have wainscoting with like all of the different profiles of molding, but unless I use white, I can't put a custom color on it. I can, I can manipulate it any way, shape or form, you know, height, size, width, no problem at all. But when I try to add that, if I want that wainscoting to be, you know, Benjamin Moore Buxton blue, or I want it to be, you know, ballet white or something like that. The moment that I use a custom color on it, the wainscoting goes away. So like, and it becomes, there's no more texture to it. So unless mm -hmm. I'm doing something wrong, I don't know how to change the color of my wainscoting. So that way, visually, I could still see the beads. How did you just do that? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> oh, so, I, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, Robin, that's a great question. And, and really it has to do, I used the material painter in a stain mode and I don't know let me move my cursor up so it's on the brown here can you see my cursor kind of looks like a paint roller that's correct yes well there's a toggle button that you're going to find when you're using the material painter if I move down and hover you can toggle it and I toggled the paint roller down in my lower left hand menu and as I move back up it's now a solid paint and the difference between the two one is a stain mode. So in the brown that I have over here, if I paint right now, it's going to remove the wood grain off of it and it's going to paint it as a solid. Okay. And if you toggle your paint mode from material painter to stain mode, then you can retain your texture. And then as you're going through, make sure it's on that and then it will then retain your beadboard material paint. I just had to do a presentation yesterday and apologize for no beadboard in the project. So I'm super thankful for this. Um, yeah. And the last question I would have, and um, um, you know, I'm um, doing a custom vanity that has vertical um, stainless steel hardware in um, the the vanity. So it's vertical, meaning like the edge of the door instead of like the top of the drawer face has like vertical hardware. So what I've done in my drawing is I've done, um, when you were manipulating the cabinet, I have separated, I've done vertical separations and I've made like a vertical separation area that's only like, you know, uh, one inch wide to represent where the vertical hardware was and it's pieced together in like a whole like you know they're offset um however like if i want to do a material painter i have all my drawer faces end up being the same color so i can't make like that vertical separation silver versus the drawer face if that's helpful so let's see if i can repeat this let me just take this cabinet here and i'm going to take Let's, um, let me just delete the drawer off of this so it'll be easier. Let's say that I take this cabinet here and I split it vertically. And then I yep. take this this new area over here. And make and, it one inch. Yeah, and I make it one inch and maybe let's just call it a blank area, right? Uh, let's yep. make it at least three inches so it's big enough so we can see it. Yeah. All right, so let's switch it. We can see it. Okay, so there's this blank area over here and you wanna paint just that one area correct um let's try it and see what happens let's just grab this uh, material off of the uh the casing and make sure we're in component mode and paint yep. that blank area so your size your size What's came that? up the same color yeah, it's not perfect yeah. Right? yeah so what you could do um let me just press undo 
what you could do is just draw that in yourself as a custom element. So if I were to go back into the floor plan view, and let's just cut a section through here. And probably what I would do in that case, one option, my default set, so it's a little crazy. If I came in here and I used just a solid tool, and there's probably a few others, let's just kind of slap something in here. Goodness. And so there's something that looks like this, right? At that point, I can paint this whatever color I want. I'll just pick up the stainless off of the hardware and apply it, make sure it's in that solid paint mode. And then if we go back into the floor plan view, let's, or the 3D view, let's see what we have. So I have it there and I've just drawn that as a custom element independent of the cabinet. Good enough, and, and, and the icon that you used was just the box, right? Just when what? you're like, you just use the box, like the 3D solid, right? Yeah, yeah, it's um, in the elevation view, if we go back, the tool yes. that I specifically used was this tool here, and it's called, yep. let me mouse over it so you can see it. It's called the primitive tool, and then specifically it's this top one called the polyline solid, and then you can just draw and shape. And you can either do it in elevation view or in a plan view, depending on which one you're kind of after. Got it, that's perfect. I really, really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. You bet, have a good one. Uh, how are we doing out there, Carrie? It, look, it looks like you've gotten to all of the questions with people who had hands raised. Okay, great. So just, uh, just to kind of wrap up here, let's make sure that um, I let you know that the next free webinar we have coming up is next Thursday. It's going to be on bathroom modeling, and that'll be Thursday at noon. Make sure you sign up. We've been filling some of our spaces up, so sign up. You sign up now. And then also for the resources, make sure that you're taking advantage of our virtual training seminars. This next Wednesday, we have two classes. It will start kitchen baths and interiors, residential, intermediate. Those are four days, they're half days, and they're currently 20% discounted. So make sure you take advantage of that. And we do one-on-one -on -one training. If you want specific training, we do screen sharing. It's very efficient, take advantage of it. We have lots of videos, we have how-to articles, and Chief Talk has been great, where you can post something up and other users out there help solve them in a very quick manner. Make sure you take advantage of it. I wanted to thank everybody for attending and have a great day. And hopefully we will see you back here next Thursday, same time.